All right, good afternoon. Um, thank you all for being here. 1-0 uh, in Big 12, really a quality win over well-coached, uh, good football team. And I, I think their record at the end of the year will, will match that. Uh, proud of how our guys fought. Thought they competed really hard. Um, wasn't perfect, but but we did enough to win the game. And, we've, and we showed improvement from the previous week. Kind of recap the game real quick. <clears throat> and I'll say this, usually go through the awards and stuff. We gave everybody the day off yesterday. So we just came in this morning, not actually meet with our players till this afternoon. So I'll hold off on that. Um, but um, kind of recap the game. Special teams, go over the things we got to improve on first and things that didn't go as well as we'd like. We had a, we had a great opportunity to block a punt. We missed that. Um, and then our last two punts of the game. I think Ollie's been really good all year. He was, and I'll talk about his good here in a second, but the two punts at the end of the game weren't good enough. Um, and then we had one really uh, kickoff return where we had really had numbers and we just didn't execute blocks uh, on the one that they gave us a chance to return. So that was disappointing. The positives on special teams, and we won, we won the field position battle. We had two punts inside the 10, uh, and both those were stops, one of them. We played really quality football. We had a punt. We we pinned them on the three. Aiden Garns made a nice play. Um, we held them. We had a good punt return, and then we scored a touchdown right before half and really played good complimentary football. Uh, Michael Hayes has been really good for us. Um, he's really He's been consistent all year field goal-wise. He made a big one uh, in the game on Saturday. Um, I think it's 40, 41 yards he made, but I thought his kickoffs, and he did this at the end of the game versus Pitt, we talk here a lot about you got to be at your best when your best is required. And versus Pitt on kickoffs and then versus uh, Kansas on Saturday, he, he was he was at his best when his best was required. Um, and then we had an explosive punt return. Uh, Rod is – that's something Rod's really worked on over the last year and a half uh, is punt returning. And he's our – and and he'll he'll do that when, uh, when Preston's done. But – Thought he stepped up, had an explosive return, did a, did a quality job on that. We blocked that well. And then our punt and our kickoff coverage has been really good all year, continues to be. Thought we made some big-time plays on kickoff. Uh, ben Cutter had an explosive uh, hit on a kickoff. Torres Simmons made an unbelievable play on the last kickoff that they fielded. And he, he took the double team and ran the double team all the way into the returner, made the tackle on the 18-yard line. Um, just incredible play by him. Um, defensively, uh, we were scrambling a little bit with injuries. You know, it's a, it's some key positions. Um, the things that we got to we got to do better is our rush defense. We talked about this after the game. You kind of pick your poison, right? Um, and the, the thing about our rush defense, and that's a really good running team. Like they're going to run the football versus most people they play. Um, we can't give up that many yards, though. And and really, the, the good thing about that is it's fixable. We've got to play blocks better. Um, we were down in the middle too much in the run game. We got to we got to play our gap leverage, and we got to use our hands more effectively. Um, and then the other thing is we got to be much better at end of possession downs. You know, we, we gave third downs. They had too much success. Um, the, the positives is – Thought our guys on defense really bounced back. We had two takeaways, uh, which were which were critical by Tyron Bradley. Uh, I thought we finished strong. So, four, uh, five drives and ended the game. We got we got off the field on four of those, um, either by the turnover on the last drive um, or forcing three punts. So only one score in the last five drives of the game. We minimized their explosive pass plays, and we got pressure on the quarterback, and we we created TFLs. Um, I think we did a much better job containing the quarterback. You know, if you look at uh, Jalen Daniels' rush numbers, and he's the best running quarterback we've played, but we did the best job of containing him. And it's it's more of a um, just staying in our lanes and doing what we're coached to do. I thought Tyron Bradley, obviously, um, he'll be he'll be rewarded, or he should be, by the Big 12. Um, he had a tremendous game, showed up on the stat sheet. But I thought uh, Fatorma played his best game as a Mountaineer. Um, Sean Martin had a really nice game. Anthony Wilson has played well all year, probably our most improved player. And then Josiah Trider um, made a lot of plays for us on defense. TJ Jackson as well. He continues to be productive up front. You know, moving over to the offense, uh, the negatives, you know, two tur two turnovers. And on, on one of the uh, – really on the first pick, 
I, I thought that was clearly pass interference and and watched it over and over, and it, it is pass interference. Uh, but the other one, we had an explosive pass play, and we get hit as we're throwing. We got to do better better in that. And we just didn't execute in the run game as well as we needed to. You know, we weren't bad in the run game, but we weren't up to our standards and up to our expectations, how we plan on running it. Um, and it's fundamental stuff. It's We're crossing over too much. Um, we're not getting on the – we, our ID, our IDs are right. We're just not finishing, and so, and it's a team run issue. It's not the O line. It's not the tight ends. It's a receivers. Sometimes it's running backs got to win one on ones. We just got to be better in the run game. The positives are we had a, we had a bunch of explosive plays. We finished strong. I think we had three touchdowns um, in our two minute offense. Really good on end of possession downs. Um, Garrett, uh, he's got to be uh, more efficient throwing the ball, but. Man, he made a bunch of plays, and and so and he made a bunch of plays at winning time. Uh, Wyatt played really well. Hudson Clement played his his best game probably in his career. Thought he played at a high level. Won uh, a lot versus man coverage. He was productive, but he even won more. The ball didn't get to him. Uh, Traylon Ray played well, and then Traylon Davis is a guy that's that's really played well for us all year. You know, he's not going to show show up in the stat sheets a lot, but he's played really well. So that's kind of the recap. Um, you know, y'all, y'all, I'll take questions. Talk about. I hadn't even looked at Oklahoma State, um, but a little bit this morning. So I would hold off on those because you're going to get some I don't knows. Um, but anything as far as how we're handling the bye week, I should say too is um, <clears throat> just meeting today. We'll practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Coaches will be on the road recruiting on Friday. Some on Saturday, and then um, then we'll practice on Sunday and Monday. Will be our off day next week. So that's kind of kind of ha- how we're handling the the week so questions Greg so uh, start with injuries uh, obviously you get it had a lot of guys um, mm-hmm. beaten up this past game so yep. w- what's the injury situation yeah so hopeful that we'll have everybody back you know on a couple of the upper body injuries you just got to wait and see how the first few days go post and so but hopeful um, other than some of the head stuff I feel confident everybody else will be back coverage you mentioned you, you changed some things up schematically and personnel wise so evaluating that did, yeah do you think you did well there well we did better mm-hmm. you know I don't I don't I don't think we've arrived by any means but we did better um you know I thought Jacoby first significant playing time of the year um made two critical errors but um uh the ball didn't find him a whole lot and I thought he did some good things fundamentally um but he made two critical errors that he can't have. Um, Crandall, up until when he got hurt, um, he's got to recognize some personnel things. You know, you got to play it a little bit different when you got tight ends compared to when you have receivers just from our speed. But I thought he played some quality snaps. Um, and then, you know, we kind of got uh, really wanted to play Aiden Garns, mostly at corner. He ended up having to play the nickel. And I forget somebody asked about this post game. Um, but we had to play him a lot more inside there than we wanted to. Um, and um, he did some good things, but he also showed that he hadn't played in there a whole lot, you know. So, um, but I thought from just from a schematic standpoint, we did a we did a better job um, in the secondary. Now, where we got hit on some balls that we shouldn't have, especially on third down, is our underneath coverage. You know, our linebackers didn't play the pass very well, um, so we got to do a better job on those underneath stuff. That's where we got hit on some third mediums, not necessarily. Uh, corner safety responsibility, but linebacker responsibility. We got to play better there. Um, but we executed uh, our base coverages, quarters, you know, some cover three stuff with our pressures. We executed that at a much higher level. Just curious, um, walk me through your mindset there. Five thirty nine. The convoy goes past you for the touchdown. You're yep. down eleven. Uh, you got to thread the needle and extend the game. Just walk me through the anatomy of a comeback here. Yeah. So. Yeah, the reverse really directly ran right right in front of me. Yeah. And uh, when Ty let the ball get outside of him, it was over. You know, that was our edge of our defense, and he didn't play that very well. But um, <clears throat> so you go into you, – you know you're going to – you got to play for two possessions. And so you immediately have to go into a two-minute mindset, even though there's five minutes and change. Because we had all our timeouts. Um, so – Immediately scored. I tell Garrett, I tell our guys, hey, we're in two-minute mode, and we will, we're going to go for two. So when we score, we'll go for two on this drive. Um, and it's important to let those guys know so you, 
when you score, they know immediately to get in, a, get in our huddle and be ready for the next play. Um, and so we had not ran the ball um, on the opening drive of the after the lightning delay. We had, you know, we had two really good plays that we just didn't we didn't fit up very well. And so I knew we wanted to get in to kind of some spread stuff and either he was going to complete passes or he was going to run around and we were going to hit some scrambles and because they were having issues with that, right? And they were playing a little bit more man coverage than I thought. And so if they were going to play man, okay, then they don't have very many eyes on the quarterback. Um, so we go into two minute. Uh, we had two nice third down conversions uh, on that drive. We hit the two point play, even though it should have hit a lot earlier. We end up Traylon did throw it on the, and then you go into, and this is where you know practice you know, is effective for the coaching staff is as much as it is for for players. So we had three minutes and some change left there with three timeouts, but you really have four because you now have the two the two minute timeout. So. What you do is you really don't want to start using your timeouts until around two and a half minutes. And so um, we didn't use the – they ran it on first. We didn't use it. Uh, they ran it on second. It's third and four. You use it because even worst-case scenario, they get it. You still should get the ball back if you can get – if you can hold it. And um, so we end up only having to use – because we got the stop on third down. We use the timeout again. And then – we essentially had two timeouts because of the two, two minutes. So when you get the ball back on offense, and we sold out too. Let me go back. And so it's on the third and four play, we sold out. We played zero coverage, and, and we came. Because um, you've, in my opinion, you play that like it's a one-play game. Now, if they get it, you still have time to adjust. But you play that like it's the, it's the play to win the game. And, and I thought we did. Like there's some – so if you go back and look at that third and fourth stop, Anthony Wilson, Sean Martin, we had some great uh, singular effort plays on that. Um, but you get the ball back, I think it was 206, if I'm if my mind's running right, or maybe been 220 something, I can't remember. Yeah, because I wanted, I was trying to run a second play and I couldn't get Traylon lined up fast enough. Um, but you, my message to the quarterback was, okay, hey, we're playing for a touchdown. All right now, we we need to get the ball inside the twenty five, but we're playing for a touchdown, um, and we're not going to force anything, and we're not in, and we're not in a super hurry. We got time, um, and so that's kind of. And then we went down and, and scored. Where you get into, it's a little bit hairy. So I think there's thirty one seconds on the last play for us. Where it gets a little hairy is we didn't have any timeouts because we had to use a timeout on a on a run where Garrett didn't get any yardage. Where it gets a little hairy is about 16 or 18 seconds is all the time you can run a field goal team out. You know, so that's where even though you had 31 seconds, you probably we probably had one more play after, you know, if that play was incomplete to ride, you probably only have one more play before you have to uh, take uh, or run your field goal team out there. So that answer your question. I know that was I tried to play I tried to play through Yeah, I tried to play through that. So speaking of of Rodney actually you basically made him just an offensive player in this game because of the circumstances. What's the mentality with him moving forward, with him stepping up so much in this past mm-hmm. game? More reps there for him, less on defense, still splitting time. So, no, I think we'll get back this week and, and start working back on, on defense. Um, he's going to play offense, too. I mean, he's done a nice job with the ball in his hands. He did it. He had two nice runs, um, had a great punt return, um, and then he did some really good things. And I was I was proud because he's really, he's really been unselfish in – and he was rewarded by that with the with a game with a game winning catch there. So, but we'll get him back in the mix defensively this week, and with the expectation we'll get some of our receivers back too. This, this time of year always seems like a good time to get a breakdown on the true freshmen, mm-hmm. not just the guys that are playing, but yeah. maybe some of those that. Yeah, anybody in particular you want to ask about? Hey, just just run through anybody you want to talk about. Yeah, I think that we got to we got to see if some guys are ready. You know, like um, I think this is a big week to. To test some guys out, you know, secondary wise, Keon Washington and uh, uh, Israel Boys, those are two that we need to get a, a really long look at this week because I, I see them getting better and I think they can help us. So those are two that, that from a defensive back standpoint, that, that jump out. Um, and then we've got to get, 
you know, this week too is, you know, between Travion Dunbar and Dior Hubbard, we need to get those guys work because uh, I can see us needing them as we, as we get going. Um, and they're both talented enough. They just got to do other things other than carrying the ball, you know, whether that's pass protection, lead blocking, any of that type of stuff. Um, and then we got to get – like uh, Elijah Kinsler is a guy that, that we're going to need as the year goes on, and so we need him to continue to improve. Um, Nate Gabriel's playing a lot. He'll continue to play. His role will, will continue to increase. Um, you know, day-to-day we haven't been able to get going. Um, he needs to practice a little bit higher level, but he's talented. You know, you know he's a guy that can help us, and, and we need to do that. Um, but those are those are kind of the main guys. Now we're going to get a lot of work. You know, so when we come in here next next Monday, you know, that's probably a better better question as far as like who played well because those guys will scrimmage Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They won't all be full tackle, but there will be a lot of eleven on eleven work all three days, and so I can give you a a kind of who, who stood out during that during that time. So even guys that made redshirt this year, so Wilkin and, I mean, mm-hmm. just, you know, uh, how yeah, many so, of those are jumping out at you? Mm-hmm. That, you know, what do you think of some of them? Yeah, so I'll just start. Look, we can start at, at quarterback. You know, I think that Khalil is super talented. And he has some wild plays um, that go both ways, mm-hmm. you know, like – Wow, that's really good, or wow, that's really bad, you know. And so, um, but he's really talented, and so there's going to be have to be some patience there, um, as far as getting him fundamentally where he needs to be and getting him where he understands kind of what defenses are going to do. But he can really run, and he's going to be a problem, you know. And he's a problem for our defense because he runs the scout team, and he's a problem, um, and he's really talented. We just got to get him honed in. And, and it's really a learning. And we knew there was going to be a learning period for him. It wasn't going to be immediate. Um, but from a talent perspective, he's, a, he's an absolutely. Like he's, got, he's got talent. Um, I think at receiver, um, Brandon Raymond is a guy that is um, – he's going to be a really good player. Uh, Dom Collins is, is fast, just like you thought. He's got to learn how to play the position. But both those are going to be solid players for us. We talked about the running backs. You know, Jen Ross is a guy that – doesn't have a doesn't have a red shirt, but it's been a big jump in level of play for him. Now he's really talented, um, and he would be Cole's backup, really from a pass receiving threat. Um, and I could see him, the more he gets comfortable, being able to help us later in the year. Um, the old linemen need some time, but th- those guys are. I feel good about them from an athletic standpoint. You know, I think those those guys are going to be able to play here. Um, Linebackers, both of those guys, you know, um, Curtis Jones playing for us on special teams. Ricky missed a lot of preseason, but Ricky Williams is going to be a high-level player here. Um, he gets downhill. He's big, he's strong. Um, I like what he's doing. Um, and then the the other DBs, like Keyshawn Robinson, is going to help us on special teams. Like he pl- He's played some on special teams. We'll probably continue to use him on special teams. Um, and I already talked about the other guys. Anybody else in particular that you want to know about? D-line-wise. Zay Jennings is going to be a good player. He's just got to learn how to play on defense. Yeah. He's really good on special teams. He, he's a difference maker on kickoff. Um, D-line-wise, let's see here. Byerson is going to be a really good player. He's, he's battling through an injury right now, um, and, we're, and he's getting used in a different way. Um, he's going to redshirt, but he's a, he's a hit in recruiting for sure. Samarco. Yep, he's Samarco's playing. playing. He's playing. Um, probably been a pleasant surprise of that class. Really, you know, he's a, he's a above average blocker right now, and as he gets more reps, I think he's going to be a really good blocker for us as it goes on. He's got good hands; he's just not a real fast guy. But um, really pleasantly surprised that he's able to help us right now. Bill, can you uh, uh, take us through the evolution of yourself as a play caller since uh, since you re- retook the duties? Uh, also, how how do you rate yourself, gambler or conservative or? You know, your approach to it, and and third, the the two point conversion play. Where did that come from, and what was the uh, uh, thinking behind that? Yeah, so <clears throat> let's start with the last one. You asked me a lot of questions there in a row, Bob. Um, so <laughs> let me let me add, let me add, I'll try to go. I'll try to work from the back forward. Um, the two point play is a uh, is a good play. It's a look off a of play we run a lot. Um, we we've hit that 
four or five times. Um, and so that's where that came from. It's a good – I like I like two-point plays where you have multiple options, whether it's your quarterback has a run-pass option or um, somebody else has a run-pass option and there's a run-pass option there. You know, Traylon's basically going to be the runner until he's not. Um, and so that's kind of the, the thought on that play. You know, from a – I don't know. Like, I think that's – you know the the question you asked me about gambler concern I, that that's I, I I think that's all in the eyes of beholder. You know I, I think this is we're pretty aggressive as far as going for it on fourth down. Um, we've been in the last two years we've been right at the tops in the country. You know if in the mix there in the top ten for sure and explosive passes. You know so I think that takes some courage to call those. Um, we are run based, so we probably, um, you know, I think sometimes our fans probably don't understand like a, a two thought process on third down. You know, we're going to run the ball a lot on third down, and the reason is because we go for it on fourth. You know, and sometimes you get the you get it on third when you run it. Sometimes you go for it on fourth. You know, and but it's it's a lot of times there's a two a two two down thought process in that. Um, you know, I, I really haven't. To, to answer your first question, like evolution as a play caller, I don't, I haven't really stopped and thought about that. Um, you know, I think that um, each game is different, um, you know, of how you call it. I think someone has to do with your personnel, someone has to do with the defense personnel. Um, there's a lot more to think through when you're the head coach co calling the game because you know kind of what your strength and weaknesses are on defense as well. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> am I different than when I was a coordinator? Probably just because I'm thinking more from a whole team perspective. And I'm older, <laughs> you know, like I think you get a little wiser the older you get most of the time. You can tell me better than that, but most of the time. Um, <laughs> most of the time. So, I don't know if that answers you, but that's how, that's how we're different. Um, and, and we're different probably from a – because what we have personnel-wise, I, I don't know if it's different because anything philosophically, it's just that's we're doing what gives our guys the best opportunity to execute right now. On the Rick play, you say he kept, takes the ball, he's a runner. On. He's a runner until he until he's made the throw. He almost yeah. made it to the sideline there. Huh? Yeah, he yeah he, he, yeah, he could have. Line. Yeah, he could. He probably should have thrown it a little early, but it worked out. So Cole made a great catch on that. Really, I mean, kind of the you know a play that. Probably he's not talked about as enough. Is that was a, that's a really difficult catch that Cole Taylor made there. Off of what Bob said, though, how do you deal with the unpredictability of your quarterback? I mean, you want things to be some of his best plays yeah. aren't drawn up the way you you plan it, and it's some of the bad things that happen. Yeah. How do you deal? Well, with I think that? there's good and bad with that. Yeah, you know, and so as a play caller, like <clears throat> especially in that game on Saturday, you kind of get a feel of. I felt like our best opportunity is just to spread them out and use plays where it's basically one-two run. Now, that's not always the best, but – and so you allow him to be who he is. Um, now, there's some things that, that he does that are really frustrating to me, um, but he also does some things that, like, I'm not coaching – like, I can't coach, you know, like, I can't coach um, him to break tackles. You know, I'm not um, – there's some things. So, I think it's give and take. So, I don't get, like, really frustrated. You know what I mean? Like, I don't outwardly get frustrated. Like, when I when we decide to do some things, like, I know there's going to be some latitude taken by him. And so, like, I just got to be okay with it. You know, like, we got in that two-minute mode the other day, and I'm like, hey, you know, this is, this is what we're going to run. And – if you pull down and run, that's fine. Just get your eyes where where they're supposed to be, you know. And um, and the kid makes plays. He's like he's a playmaker um, that can continue to be better as a passer. The message to you, your to Garrett and the coaches. Let's figure out how to make Garrett the best version of himself, as opposed to being the best quarterback. Nah, you know he does some things like. <clears throat> If he would consistently do what he's supposed to do with his feet, he he would be um, at a higher completion percentage. 
Um, and so from a coaching perspective, look, I'm good if he's going to run around. I'm fine with all that. But when the play's in the pocket, let's be fundamentally sound. And so that's what he's got to get better at. Um, now, he throws the deep ball extremely well. You know, I'm, I'm talking about all kinds of different types of deep balls. He throws those really well. Um, and But he's got to, in rhythm throws, he's got to make sure his base stays the way it should be. Your assessment there, Garrett, could you say that about a lot of quarterbacks yeah. in today's game? Yeah, no doubt. No. That's what I, the game is not. I think sometimes people want to um, really, hey, this is what high level quarterback play is. This is like, to me, like it's about scoring points. Are you scoring points? Are you moving the ball? Are you moving the chains? You know? And so, like, Garrett does it very similar to, like, watching Lamar Jackson yesterday. You know, and I'm not comparing Garrett to Lamar. I'm just saying, though, like, Lamar, ja Lamar Jackson, probably the best running quarterback ever in the NFL. And he does it different than the guy that was calling the game and Brady, right? Um, but Lamar Jackson, still pretty special, you know. And, and so, there's – as the game continues to evolve, I just think they're, you know, the quarterback, the quarterbacks have a lot more freedom. And, like, I'm, I'm comfortable with some of the uncomfortableness of just, like, playing backyard ball sometimes. Has the game evolved in some part, though, because, um, I mean, there's just not many, I don't know, I'm, I'm an old guy. There's not many damn arenas around anymore. Yeah, well. Quarterbacks are different now, so the quarterbacks are different. Coverages are much more complicated too. You know, like um, there's a lot more like matchup kind of like you use a basketball term like a matchup zone. People, you know, and people are confusing the quarterbacks. It's it's harder to play that position. Um, there's better athletes rushing, you know. So like, <clears throat> um, but I think that going back to what John was asking is. Is what we did on Saturday always going to be the answer? I would say probably not. But on Saturday it was the best answer because we just spread them out and we got some guys in some favorable one-on-ones and we get opened up a lot of running lanes for him when he wanted to pull down and run. In that regard, you said this is hard to do after the game, but is it tempting not to just spread it out and run two-minute all the time considering the success you have with that when you do yeah. it? So if you do that all the time, you make it really, really hard on your defense, first of all. Okay. Um, the second thing is, is if you're going to do that all the time, then people are working that all the time. Mm -hmm. When people are going to line up and play us, that's not the first thing they're working on. They're working on, all right, how they're going to play our run game concepts and how they're going to play the quarterback run stuff. That's, that's the first things they're thinking about. And then how do you stop shot plays? That's what people that line up and play us right now are. Now, they probably get to the two-minute stuff later in the week, mm -hmm. but at the very – start, they're going to go, all right, how are we going to limit the run game? Like, how are we going to play all the quarterback stuff? And then how do we keep the ball in front of us on shot plays? Without a doubt, that's how, what people are thinking about. Um, and so if you do that all the time, then people, you know, because there's some cat and mouse stuff that you can do that makes it really hard. Um, and then you're putting your O-line in a really tough spot, you know. But now you have a, a bye week coming up, obviously. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that makes this schedule this year different because you have a second bye week coming up? Do you like that, having the double? Yeah. And, and just thoughts on the double double bye situation? Now. Yeah, it, yeah, I think it happens over three or four years. Um, and I think it's a positive for us, you know, just because, you know, our schedule, the way it plays out is we play 11, 11 really good teams. And so, you know, I think it'll help us. You know, um, we've got a really tough stretch coming off this bye week, and this gives us an opportunity to kind of catch our breath a little bit, get healthy, um, and then we got a really we got a tough stretch. You know, in between the two bye weeks, we got a tough stretch, and so um, we'll take it. I like it. I think the first one comes at a good time. The second one comes at a good time. You know, how, do you, how do you feel your wide receivers have done against man coverage? Man, we won a bunch on Saturday. Yeah, we won a bunch. Um, you know the. Like I said, Traylon Ray really got grabbed, um, I thought, egregiously on, on the interception. 
Um, that one sticks out to you uh, as far as not winning, but it's hard when they got the back of your collar, you know. Um, so, but we won a bunch. We won a bunch. Um, that's the best we've done against man coverage this year. Clarify when you were talking earlier about getting guys back. Is Burks among that? Yeah, we're hopeful, hopeful. I know more about the, those. Those situations take you know upwards of five days to kind of get a good picture of where it's at. Um, I would say hopeful right now. We'll see how he does. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Did he give you an explanation of what? No, nah, you know he just. It, it was a, a injury that he took during a during during a play, and and it really didn't um, affect him until he was on the bench, and that's kind of when yeah when the situation occurred. Is Jordan going to stay up in the box? Yes, he'll stay up there. Mm-hmm. How beneficial of the snaps they gave him? Yeah, well, he's we really felt like after coming out of spring ball that he was going to be able to help us, um, and so when Eddie got hurt. You know, we were really planning on playing him and kind of easing him into it, and as his role would increase his year. But he got fast tracked once Eddie got hurt, and I thought he did. He got one. He 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 tried to play behind one block and it hurt us. But the rest of the plays, he was positive. He was a real positive force. Like he got good push. They gave us the ability to play Hammond into the boundary some more, um, and so he'll continue. He'll continue to play. I'm excited about him. I, I really am. Uh, outside of the Cincinnati Houston game, every Big 12 game so far seems like it's come down to yeah. last quarter, last possession. That's, That's the way it's going to be. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, what makes a difference in those games? Composure, experience, uh, love. Well, I think it. I think it's. There's a lot of different things. Um, I think home field advantage matters in college football. Um, so I think that's one thing that's pretty consistent. Uh, not always the case, but it's pretty consistent. And then, um, and our league's going to be that way. Um, and we got we got really. I think the the coaching in this league is at a high end, um, and there's not a huge talent disparity as far as between one through sixteen. There's just there's just not. Um, and so, games are going to come down to the end, and a lot of times it comes down to special teams, and it's and it's really not who makes the big play; it's who doesn't have the big negative. Um, and then your turnover margin is always going to be. And then I think the the other indicator in our league is going to be who can run the ball. You know, the and it's a little bit different. You look at our game, um, but I think if you look at it over the the course of the year, it's who can run the football. Well, I just think I think everybody knows that. You know, I think if you read all sixteen of them today, um, whoever's doing press conferences today, I think. That's the expectation, you know. And I've said this a lot in our league. The good thing is you have an opportunity to win every league, every game. Bad thing is you have an opportunity to lose every game, you know. And that's we essentially play eleven of those every year, you know. And uh, and so um, it's a uh, it is it's a tough league. It's uh, and, and the talent is somewhat equal. And there's and there's high level coaching. And there's some really experienced head coaches in the league too. Anybody else? All right, thank you all.